This is an article from my October 1996 Early Warning Report newsletter. I think you will find it sheds a lot of light on what's happening today. An investment earns profits through interaction with the economic system. The economic system is shaped by the legal system, and the legal system is, unfortunately, the result of politics. So to make a reliable investment forecast, we must make a reliable political forecast. Years ago, I began asking myself, what is the most reliable political forecast we can make? Studying the behavior of governments over the past several thousand years, I realized the most logical political forecast is that governments will continue being as stupid and crooked as they always have been. All of my investment forecasts begin with that premise. You've seen me write often that markets are fast and smart while governments are slow and stupid. This is more than just rhetoric. Most people who work in government are decent, intelligent, and resourceful. Yet, without exception, in every country I've ever visited, the most corrupt, harmful, and dim-winded organization is the government. Everywhere, no matter how smart they are or how hard they work, public employees are embarrassed at the poor quality of their production, and their feelings are hurt by jokes their neighbors tell about them. This situation isn't new. Go back in history as far as you wish, and you will find the citizens complaining about the incompetence of their government bureaucrats. How can people who are so smart individually be so stupid when they put their heads together? Because, and this is my key point, the intelligence of an organization is a different thing entirely from the intelligence of its members. The individual chips in a computer may be high capacity, but if the computer is not assembled well, they will accomplish little and may do great harm. Human organizations can be divided into two types, smart and stupid. Private organizations are smart. They have a built-in mechanism guiding them to do a, a good job, and this mechanism is customer choice. If the customers do not like the quality or price of a baker's bread or a candlestick maker's candlesticks, they can refuse to buy. The producers must do a better job or go broke. A stupid organization is one which has no such guiding mechanism. Governments have the legal privilege of using brute force on persons who have not harmed anyone. This is what sets government apart from all other institutions. When a government collects a tax from you, it is saying, buy the services we are selling or men with guns will haul you away to prison. This sabotages the guidance system. When a government runs out of money, it can simply take more or print more. It does not clean up its act. It has no need to. I have a weekly luncheon meeting at a restaurant that hires the mentally retarded. The food and service are great, an excellent value. I'm sure the average IQ in the place is a lot lower than that of any government agency, yet compared to government agencies, this restaurant is brilliant. Lean and efficient, this organization has the incentive to keep whatever works and jettison whatever doesn't because the customers can choose to take their business elsewhere. A government's customers cannot. Government has the legal privilege of collecting money no matter how sloppy or harmful it may be. Even if a government were staffed entirely by geniuses, it would still lack the guidance system of supply, demand, and price. It would be an all-star football team running plays written by a chimpanzee. Let me be very clear about this. The institution of government was invented to escape the burden of being smart. Its fundamental purpose is to take money by force, to evade the market's guidance, to have the privilege of being stupid. I should point out that the numerous private organizations 
who run to government for special protections and subsidies are asking for the same privilege. They want to be relieved of the burden of being smart. They want to receive money even if they are stupid. This is why so many large corporations are so dim-witted as depicted in the popular Dilbert cartoons. As a government grows older, it grows larger, slower, and duller, and more frustrating to its workers. No matter how many PhDs these people may have, or how good their intentions, they cannot overcome decades of accumulated red tape and dead wood. If government ran the clock industry, a digital watch would cost a year's wages and be the size and weight of a manhole cover. Eventually, the dim-witted dinosaur grows so big that the harried taxpayers can no longer keep it fed and it dies, as the Soviet government did. The U.S. government is headed for this same fate. I give it no more than 20 years until it dies of obesity. Summarizing, the intelligence of an organization is a different thing than the intelligence of its members. Governments are stupid because the privilege of taxation protects them from the need to be smart. The economy and investment markets are controlled by the government. I suspect a main cause of bad investment forecasts is the belief that if we get honest, intelligent people in the government, the government will be honest and intelligent and the economy and investment markets will be healthy. Well, it can't be. As long as the government has the ability to tax, it will be stupid and it will make a wreck out of the economy and investment markets. Unrealistic political forecasts lead to unrealistic investment forecasts. Again, that article was published in the October 1996 Early Warning Report newsletter and I think you can see it sheds a lot of light on what's happening today.